Hi, it's Tim from oraclebase.com. In this video, we'll demonstrate the installation and configuration of Ansible. Ansible is a Python based open source tool that enables infrastructure as code. It can be used for the whole life cycle of your infrastructure, including provisioning, configuration management, and application deployment. For this series of videos, we're going to use four virtual machines. Ansible can be installed on any machine, but typically it's installed on a central control host or build server. In this example, we use Ansible Server as the control host. This will manage the two application servers and the database server. All of these VMs are based on Oracle Linux 8, which is a binary clone of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. If it helps you to visualize it, this is what we have. This video is intentionally concise. The linked article has more information, as well as links to the Vagrant build and Ansible documentation, if you want to dig a little deeper. First we need to install Ansible. On Enterprise Linux, Ansible is part of the Extra Packages for Enterprise Linux, or EPEL repository. We install the EPEL repository by installing the EPEL release package. With the repository in place, we can install the Ansible package. This will install any dependencies, including Python. We test the installation by checking the Ansible version. We have version 2.9.27 installed. We create a working directory and switch to it. We create an inventory file listing the hosts we want to manage. The inventory can be IP addresses, short names or fully qualified names. If we use host names, they must be resolvable to the IP address via a DNS or a host file entry. We check the contents of the inventory.ini file we created. And we can see our four hosts listed using fully qualified names. Ansible Server is not in a group. App Server 1 and 2 are in the App Servers group. Database 1 is in the Databases group. You can make up group names that suit you. A host can be in multiple groups. You'll see why that could be useful later. Ansible uses SSH to manage hosts, so we need to configure passwordless SSH. These virtual machines were built using Vagrant, so they have a user called Vagrant with sudo privilege. Rather than creating a new user with sudo privilege on each server, I'll just use the Vagrant user. We create a key pair on the control host using the SSH keygen tool. We could accept the default file name, but we'll use the name Ansible key to make it clear what this is for. We don't use a passphrase for the key, if you want to use a passphrase, the linked article explains how to use it. We check the contents of the .ssh directory in the user's home directory. And we can see the Ansible key in Ansible key pub files. We copy the public key to the authorized keys file and change the permissions to 600. This will allow Ansible server to SSH itself without a password. We need to add this public key to the other servers. We can do that with the ssh copy id command, passing the private key and the host name. It attempts to copy across the associated public key to the host. For the first connection attempt we have to accept the fingerprint and enter the password for the remote user. We repeat the process for the other servers. We can now make passwordless connections to the servers. As an example, we SSH to each server using the private key, hostname, and issue the date command. We get the output from the date command returned from the remote server. We're now in a position to test our setup. 
we make sure we're in our working directory. We use the Ansible command to run the ping module against a server. We have the word Ansible, the private key being used for the connection, the inventory containing our managed hosts, the host or group we want to run the command against, and we use the minus M flag to specify the ping module. Ping doesn't do a network ping, it makes an SSH connection to the remote server. We get a warning which we'll deal with later and the result of the ping. We see a success message and the response to our ping is a pong. So that worked, but having to include the key and in inventory in the command is ugly. We can solve this by creating a defaults file. We create a file called ansible.cfg in our working directory. We check the contents of the file and we see three defaults. The inventory location, private key file location and interpreter python. The first two are self-explanatory, the last stops us seeing that warning message. With the defaults file in our working directory, we can run the command without explicitly including the private key and in inventory. We get the same result but without the warning message. We've seen how we can manually run a command against a single host. We can also run a command against all hosts in a group. In this example, we run ping against all hosts in the app servers group. We get a success message from app server 1 and app server 2. We can use all to run a command against all hosts in the inventory. We can use ungrouped to run a command against all hosts in the inventory that are not part of a group. In this case, that's just the Ansible server. So now we have Ansible installed and configured, we're ready to start using it. We'll start looking at Ansible playbooks in the next video in the series. Thanks for watching. As always, there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.